Welcome back. We're talking about the escalating trade war between the United States and China. Let's get back to our panel right now. Nathan, China has responded to the U.S. threat to impose raised tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese imports. Uh, China has come up with a threat of its own. What do we know about Chinese plans? Uh, well, it's not on 200 billion. So far, yeah. they've uh, matched light for light. But I think what we're seeing from Beijing is a carefully cal calibrated response to sort of show me let's let's not escalate and let's not match and and do whatever. But also, there's a confusion over the U.S. number because, as you know, last week uh, there was this 200 billion dollars worth of uh, Chinese imports that's going to be potentially tariffed. The president said 10% at the beginning, and then he changed his mind and said, well, let's consider 10% and 25%. And that whole process is going to play out over the month of August. So the Chinese response is like, well, OK, let's uh, tariff $60 billion worth of US goods, but they've also got a sliding scale in place. 5% very low, all the way up to 25%. I was reading through the list of 5,000 items that the um, Chinese may re retaliate with. It's quite comprehensive, so they've done their homework. Right. Um, so what the Chinese are doing is saying, look, we will retaliate again, but signaling uh, much more ahead of time that they too are flexible. And of course, behind the scenes, there's a lot of pressure for talks. So we'll, we'll wait and see. But what? What's amazing about the U.S. policy is from the get-go, they thought China would back down. In fact, that but was the policy. You, you talk about that pressure. It's coming from U.S. business, isn't it? Well, interestingly enough, you know, I've attended some of these hearings, and about 90% that I've heard of um, business go and they go, tariffs are bad for business. And then you get like 10% of companies go, well, actually, imports have been much yeah. cheaper and much more competitive. Let's put on more tariffs so my U.S. business can do well. And that's where we're seeing, uh, and, and believe it or not, you know, in, in Trump heartland, there are, yeah. is some sort of support for this. Shindo, uh, Nathan talks about those hearings that he has been attending. Now, the U.S. government has invited public comment on these uh, tariffs that it is planning. Uh, the public had until August, the end of August to make their views known. It's just been extended to September 5th. China has called the tariffs blackmail and says it will retaliate, as we've just heard. Are there any prospects for compromise here, do you think? Well, not now. I think, you know, for the Chinese side, obviously, the, uh, you know, the door to negotiation, to discussion is always open. But uh, Beijing refuses to be seen as weak, you know, to accept, uh, you know, the pre-request of the United States, so the preconditions pre uh, for the upcoming uh, negotiations, if there is any. Uh, so Beijing basically said, like, you, okay, you cannot, we cannot start the negotiation well, you know, at the game point from Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have your, you know, threat, and China basically offers retaliatory, uh, you know, measures, countermeasures, uh, you know, of 60 billion U.S. dollars goods over mm -hmm. there. So this, uh, this is, uh, I think, for, for China, of course, China welcome uh, negotiation. Uh, remember, back in May, uh, there was agreement, basically, to put hold the uh, trade war. Yeah. But uh, a week later, U.S. started to impose the tariffs. Merrill, uh, one of the big complaints from President Trump, and we heard this during the campaign as well as after he became president, was that uh, the U.S. was running a huge trade deficit with China. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, how would what he is doing now, imposing these tariffs, actually change that? How will it re address that imbalance? In fact, the Chinese foreign minister, Wang Yi, he talked about that uh, at ASEAN. This is what he had to say. Let's watch. 60% of Chinese exports to the United States are actually made by foreign invested companies, including American firms in China. So is the United States trying to put tariffs on its own companies? Even if the U.S. was able to reduce the import of China-made products via levying tariffs, they would still import the same products from other countries. It doesn't solve what the U.S. calls a trade imbalance issue. What do you make of that, Merrill? Well, I think he's absolutely right. In fact, the numbers came out today, and our trade deficit actually went up. And that's largely because of the strong economy. If we impose those sanctions, it may have an effect on the yuan, which may make Chinese products more affordable in the U.S. and may just sort of go against uh, uh, Trump's efforts. Alexander, you've... Uh, I'll get to you in a moment, Nathan. Sure. Uh, Alexander, uh, you are a political economist. Um, the U.S. has also imposed tariffs on the European Union, on Japan as well. What kind of impact is this going to have internationally? I think it's going to have a very negative, destabilizing, quite possibly 
hyperinflationary effect on everybody. Not too long ago, not too many days ago, China slashed uh, tariffs by 8% on food and medicine. Uh, that was a symbolic gesture. Washington didn't acknowledge that whatsoever. Uh, the, the U.S., the total uh, the China-U.S. Uh, goods and services trade is a whopping $650 billion a year. Of course, in the United States, we are very concerned. We are concerned with a trade imbalance of $310 billion. We export to China around $170 billion, while China exports to us, we import from China around $480 billion. This was one of the mandates of President Trump, and Americans are very concerned, but I am afraid President Trump lacks a deeper understanding of how uh, complex and convoluted international trade and commerce actually is. I think uh, this is a ripple in the large scheme of things. I don't believe President Trump will get elected or re-elected in 2018. There are very uh, qualified Republicans, uh, a lot of them from the business, uh, with a business background, who are going to be nominated, uh, who are strongly uh, uh, announcing that. And uh, not too many weeks ago, we had a letter that was signed by the CEOs of many American multinational corporations. Right pleading with the Trump administration not to do this, not to uh, inflict this tariff war. is going to affect everybody negatively, especially in the United States. People forget that uh, China is yeah. a contributor into keeping inflation low in the uh, United States. So uh, this is a lose-lose proposition. Okay, Nathan, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, this is all a mess. And uh, I think it's absolutely right to focus on the midterms, because remember we have the European Union um, uh, President of the Commission, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, come in. They've called a truce uh, in the trade war, largely because the auto tariffs that he was suggesting yeah. would have actually wrecked the global auto industry, especially you know, in the United you say, States. You, you say a mess, but this is what uh, the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi had to say after his meeting with sure. uh, Mike Pompeo, the U.S. Secretary of State. Let's watch this. We are willing to resolve the concerns of both sides via talks on the basis of an equal footing and mutual respect. He was accommodating on this as a direction and said that he does not want current frictions to continue. Reason for optimism? Yeah, I think so. And I was just about to say before the clip, but Wang Yi said it better than I could, <laughs> is that the deal with Yong, uh, well, if it's a deal to, uh, to talk about a deal, but essentially uh, the, the trade freeze with the European Union, buying more soybeans, more, more liquid natural gas, was exactly the deal that was on the table with the Chinese two months ago. Yep. So that, to me, brings me hope that, that Trump's political calculus as we move into the midterm November elections, where a lot of votes are at stake and a lot of businesses are very worried, means that he will reach out. I think he wants a quick win, but he wants to see it as a victory. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That is it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Anand Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.